We'll give everyone one more minute to flow in here. Nice to see you, Ben. Great to be here. All right, we're going to get started. Um, thanks for joining us. And for everyone who has uh, signed up today, they will receive a recording and a, and a brief summary. So I'm so excited to have you here today, um, Ben. And just uh, introduce myself first. I'm Julie Kane, Chief Learning Officer of Participate. And together with purpose-driven organizations, certainly like our guest today, we help people learn and work better together through inclusive and engaging online communities of practice. And I'm very pleased to welcome everyone to this uh, webinar in our lifelong learning conversation series. It has truly become one of the highlights of my job that I get to do this every month. Um, the virtual conversation series offers an informal opportunity. So we don't really do a ton of like slides. We really want to have this time where we get to have a conversation to learn from a range of experts on topics related to kind of empowering lifelong learners. Um, before we get started, I want to share a few technical notes. Captions are available for the webinar, but please let us know in the Q&A function if they're not working. And please also submit any questions for Ben or for myself in the Q&A function on Zoom, and they will be monitored throughout the session. And we can try to get to as many questions as we can um, before the end. Um, and also we're going to be using for the webinar, we'll use the chat function to share resources and relevant info with you along the way. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be sharing a recording of this webinar with you um, following. All right, before we begin, um, I'd love to get an idea of who we have joining us today. So we're going to pop up a quick poll. Please take 30 seconds and answer the question. Um, and then also, if you don't see the poll, just check the toolbar of your Zoom window. Yeah, this just allows Ben and myself to understand who, who's with us today. You know, Ben, this is where I get to um, always challenge myself to have silent time, listening time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have um, some for-profit, non-profit, and some educators here with us from K-12, which is wonderful. Um, so I hope that there are probably some researchers in there, I would imagine, from your community. Um, so let's get started. All right, I am thrilled to welcome today's featured guest, Benjamin Young, Senior Program Manager of Strategic Initiatives at the International Science Reserve which is an initiative of the New York Academy of Sciences that's building a global network of scientists ready to act when and amid global crises. Um, ben develops global programs and partnerships at the International Science Reserve, ISR, to advance scientific research and address global crises. He works with leading scientists and institutions worldwide, fostering cross-disciplinary and cross-border collaborations. Um, in doing so, Ben has led strategic initiatives in various sectors, including academia, nonprofit, philanthropy, focusing on social impact and community solutions. Among his many achievements, Ben holds a PhD from Columbia University with teaching experience at Columbia Princeton. And here comes my terrible French, Ecole Normale Supérieure in France. Welcome, Benjamin. And I could not ask for a better guest to talk about the power of community practice. So welcome to our series. Thanks so much. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure to be here. And I love the name of your series, Lifelong Learning. Fits really well um, with the ISR's communal practice, obviously, and the ISR's broader mission. So very excited. That's fantastic. OK, I know we have some questions that we talked about before the webinar, but I really do want our, our audience to know about how you got to this job. I'm very curious, just in terms of your background, if you could yeah. just take a minute to, to tell us how you got to this current place in your career. Yeah. So, um, well, I think one reason it's sort of with lots of um, institutions um, crumbling, that sounds a little dark around us, um, and the sort of rising importance of science in that context, um, and, and also emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic, um, that this the, the role of science was kind of further heightened. I think that's kind of how I arrived at this role. Um, 
thinking about um, how my broad background in public policy, consulting, um, higher education, and social impact work um, could kind of be of use. Um, and I sort of had to be part of building this new initiative when I found out about it, um, sort of brought things together nicely. So um, can you tell us about the International Science Reserve's mission to mobilize scientific expertise globally and the traction you've seen to date? So I think just extending from that, from your personal experience, yeah. tell us about that mission. That's right, we are. We're mobilizing a truly global network um, of scientists and stakeholders. And our network is 10,000 strong and growing from over a hundred countries. Um, wow. to prepare and respond to big challenges like the next pandemic or pressing climate emergencies. Um, and so one of the fundamental aims is to facilitate cross-border transdisciplinary scientific collaborations. Um, and to our traction, um, I, I think the fact that so many have joined the ISR indicates that there's a real interest and motivation um, from scientists and stakeholders. And a few of the things that I think explain um, the early success beyond that, um, I think I'll break them down to four main points, is um, our network is completely free and open. Um, our model um, includes partners from across academia, NGOs, government bodies, and the private sector. Um, for instance, uh, two of our founding partners are IBM and Google. And we are internationally um, uh, very um, intentionally international in our focus. So our membership really is international. Over half of our members come from um, what's sometimes referred to as the Global South. Um, so an ISR member from the University of Nairobi might collaborate with a member from the UK at Cambridge University or a researcher at Antalya, Turkey might work on a crisis um, with someone from Tokyo. Um, and then finally, uh, what we do, and particularly what we're doing online with Participate, is very much driven by our members. And I think that's helped um, catalyze uh, what we're doing. Yeah, I do not think I can overstate this enough that, you know, your, our partnership, you're, you're teaching us every day sort of the power of communities of practice as a model for change making and cross disciplinary work. Um, and so I'm curious if you could focus in on that, the model of a community practice, how you see that working and how you, how that fostering collaboration, because that can also offer challenges doing things, you know, time zones and cross um, cultural uh, collaboration, different perspectives on the problem, different perspectives on scientific research. So I would just be curious about your thoughts there in terms of how you leverage that, but then how, how the daily work goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> that the, the communities or practice are one of the things that really drew us um, to participate. Um, it's it's a, an important part of your approach, and it's something that was important to us as well. Um, so we really believe that collaborative or collective knowledge mm -hmm. is powerful. And so the concept of a community practice just fits perfectly with the ISR mandate. From a practical perspective, it also has to be easy. Um, so I mentioned um, that the ISR is completely free and open. Um, and anyone who's interested simply goes to our website, isr.nyas.org, little plug, so isr.nyas.org. <laughs> plug away. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Signs up. And then when you fill out our simple form, you're then invited to join our digital hub. That's what we call it. And that's everything that goes on on the participate platform and, and centered around the community of practice. So once you join, um, you can be part of the various activities and offerings that we have on participate centered around that model um, and uh, where scientists can begin engaging in preparedness activities, um, in particular learning together um, and also interacting with our wonderful community manager, we'll probably talk about later, um, as, as he would say, everyone is thriving together in this community of practice. That's fantastic. So is there like a particular success story or even significant impact or even a challenge, however you want to uh, take this, you know, this next question, just something that really kind of exemplifies for you um, the power of what you're doing? Yeah, something that could be a challenge, but that really is where we draw our power from at the ISR, I think, is our particularly diverse um, um, membership when it comes to scientific fields and countries represented, other things as well, but but those two main aspects. Um, I think it's what gives our, our community a big advantage in the end. Um, so we do everything to harness these aspects in our network. Um, in our participate community, uh, we're still in public beta, or that's what we call it. So we're still experimenting. 
Um, but I'll highlight three three things that have been successful for us there in the community of practice. Um, so I, I know I alluded to this and we'll talk about it in a, in a second, but first and foremost, we have a truly wonderful community manager, Jad Sinchel, who plays a, a key role. Um, and we can talk about that a little more. Um, second, we're leveraging the ISR's model of using crisis scenarios across um, preparedness activities for scientists. And that seems to work really well. Oh, that's um, cool. and yeah. Third, we're rolling out very types of activities that are designed for the different um, uh, scientists. So it's kind of addressing the potential challenge that I mentioned. And so they feature crises that affect regions differently um, and in formats that appeal differently to people um, um, overall and, and different types of scientists. Um, and and uh, along with that, we have an amazing group of um, beta testers who've helped us a lot. I think that's also um, something that we've harnessed. They're just a super smart bunch um, who really believes innately in the ISAR's mission. Um, so we've got scientists and, and various areas of research, but they're from um, Chile, Turkey, the UK, just to name a few. Um, so really diverse and, and we're inviting more people to join that group as well. So cool. So, I mean, this is something that um, I know here at Participate, we talk about a lot, which is there's the community piece, but it's really the P part, <laughs> which is what is the practices. And I think where we've seen, and I think it's always a challenge, particularly in online communities. It's like, what does that practice actually look like? And I think that's where ISR has really shown us the way and given us a lot of cool models and examples. Can I ask you to just dig in and give us an example, if it's possible, of of this type of scenario? So this is almost like a problem space that you have the community work on together. Could you give us an example of that? Um, yeah. And so we're, we're, what we're building, um, so we've done big exercises with sort of in-depth scenarios. Now we're trying um, to do kind of mini scenarios and mini activities, but yeah. but keeping them serious around this game. Um, so a little easier to do um, and with the amount of participate participation that each person wants. Um, but for example, we do have... We have a little game that we, we haven't launched yet, but if people join, they'll see it soon around a hurricane that's coming. Um, and you just have a very short amount of time to think about that as if you're in, in the crisis situation. And then um, as a scientist, sort of just think about what you would do first in a list of options. So um, what would be the things you would prioritize or not, or what would be the tools you would use um, or not? And so, um, um, yeah, that's just an example of an activity that we're doing um, that, That's that so we great. Yeah. And then I can imagine that, you know, using, I mean, first of all, I, I know I, when I share this with our, our game-based uh, friends, we, we have some other partners, New York Hall of Science um, as well. And, you know, I think game for, for children and also when we work with K-12 teachers, knowing that scientists do this, <laughs> right? In some ways you're using uh, you know, game-based approaches as well as problem-based um, and that this is something that kids really gravitate towards. So we're always trying to push classrooms um, to use this approach. So it's really wonderful to hear scientists sort of coming together on these sort of mock scenarios that that's actually how they think about doing their work. And then because of that cross-collaboration, I imagine they would then bring that to their own local context, which is like, look what I learned from this uh, scientist in Turkey. Look what this person in Chile is doing. So um, I think that's really awesome. Um, all right, I do want to also give a plug to, we have, I, I would like to, uh, we have the smartest, um, <laughs> smartest product feedback team in the world. So not only do we have this group of scientists, um, you've been with us as we've been really rapidly developing uh, new features on our platform. And so I just thought if there's any like, you know, part of that process with us that you'd love to give feedback on, you've been incredible and your community incredibly generous with giving us feedback. And I think the success of our, of how we support communities of practice, you know, we owe you a huge debt. So I'd love to hear just your experience with that briefly, if you could. Yeah, it's been it's been really wonderful to to partner with you guys, partner with Participate You, Julie, Don, um, and and the whole team. Um, and so we, yeah, we 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 kind of collaborated on on your amazing contextual discussions, which are really central to the platform and so yeah. smart. Uh, and um, I just mentioned, I mean, there are a bunch of things. Um, oh. Maybe not so much a feature, but the fact that you're mobile first and you you work really well, your platform works really well and on varied devices, 
in very yeah. global uh, you know contexts with different types of bandwidth that's important to us as well um but we're particularly excited about badging that you've that you've just launched and that we collaborated on as well and that we're just rolling out but but we love that so. yeah actually so i i guess i can um I know you've mentioned your community manager, and this is another way in which you know you've been a model for us and, and an example that we we share with others, um, because you've leaned into the importance of a community manager. You know the technology; you can't just build it and they will come. <laughs> we know this will not work. So, can you talk a little bit about the community manager, and then I guess you know flowing into how you've been using recognition systems for your community practice, because I think that's also a great, you know, model Absolutely. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I mentioned Jadson Carlos Dos Santos. He goes by Jadson Gel, but he plays a really vital role. He's at the center of this community. Um, and actually, we held an extensive search for a community manager, had an mm -hmm. impressive group of finalists, but felt so lucky to find Jadson. Um, he's a first-rate early career scientist himself, so he, in his own right in genetics, um, um, who really lives the ISR's mission and, and the community's mission. So he's per really passionate um, uh, about leadership and the role of science and, and making scientists leaders and change makers um, who kind of have real world impact beyond their, their siloed research. So he really believes in working together in, in transdisciplinary ways. Um, yeah. So he brings all of that, yeah, just to, to everything we do, um, his fine grained understanding of both our community and sort of our purpose and the, the community of practice itself. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's Jadson. And then, so, and, um, we're working with the recognition systems with badging in particular, he's central to that as well. And we launched our first badge, which was just a member badge, a nice member badge, um, that people can display on the platform and on other platforms like LinkedIn to say, hey, I'm an ISR member um, and part of the ISR community on Participate. And the feedback from, from that we've gotten already, it's been tremendously positive. They, people just loved it. Our, our community members loved it. And over the coming weeks, we'll be rolling out a series of activities and games like the ones we talked about. Each one will have a badge or a series of badges that you can earn um, when you participate in these preparedness activities. Um, we're just really excited about this. Yeah, that is so great. I, mean, I can't wait to highlight those. I mean, is there one, like I know you're rolling them out. Is there one in particular you're excited about that's coming up? Um, yeah. yeah. We've got different crises like flooding, wildfire. There's one um, that's that I think we'll roll out also that is um, sort of a, a poly, poly, poly crisis one. Um, so it'll get um, people thinking about emerging challenges that touch almost every uh, facet of, of, of our lives. Um, and, and thinking of that in the context of global crises. So I don't want to say too much more yet, but that one's, okay, that one's okay. kind of well, yeah. <laughs> But everyone, you know, stay tuned and please keep, keep yeah. uh, you know, um, access um, the website. I know Christine has been putting these resources into um, into the chat um, because I, I, you know, I think it's interesting to me and I guess I'm just gonna ask you a couple more questions just around the recognition piece because these are scientists that have already been through really rigorous, you know, they, they are all whole PhDs, different, different certifications. Um, and I think in the badging community, there's always that, you know, what's the rigor and who's issuing it? And I, I guess I'm curious, like, what do you think the value of for your community in particular of this kind of activity and this recognition around their collaboration around scenarios? These are not being issued by, you know, a university. It's not being issued by a country. It's being issued by a community to recognize each other. And I guess, yeah, just I don't know where my question is there, but I think. I'm curious your thoughts there about what that traction is about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so and I should say, you know, we're just starting with the badging. So it remains to be seen how that yeah. fits in with everything. But um, it's very much what you were saying. So yeah, this is not a, a university certification um, at all, but it is a signal of something. Um, and for, for, I know for Jadson, our community manager, it's um, the main thing is being part of this collective effort, part of a global movement um, that we think is being built by our, by our members. Um, um, but, you know, and you'll, you'll also be able to indicate that you're thinking about your research in the context of these very important um, potential crises, one, ones that are likely to occur that we have um, historical examples of and that are um, recurring more and more frequently. Um, yeah. yeah. So there is, a, I noticed that there is a question um, in the chat 
um, around, and mostly it was around um, the scenario you mentioned earlier in our conversation. Um, we had a listener whose audio dropped out. So if you would just recap that and then maybe another one, you know, another scenario um, related to that. Um, that yes, that so that was probably the mini mini scenario on hurricanes. Yes. Um, yes. So right, 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 right. So in that one, um, the example we use is a, a, a very forceful hurricane, category five hurricane that's approaching um, the coast as they usually do. Um, <laughs> and so we, um, it's um, what goes along with that is just an activity where actually you think about potential policy decisions that can be taken and why you would um, select certain ones over others based on the scenario of this particular um, hurricane and the location and anything else that you want to factor in. Um, we have worked on other scenarios like wildfires that spread over multiple countries. Um, mm -hmm. we, we had a, a, a great one around flooding and a, a really interesting one around um, food um, crop crises. So if one of the four major food crops that sustain most of our societies were unavailable for whatever reason, which, whether it's a natural reason like abrupt daylight um, reduction, so the crop can't grow or something like a nuclear disaster. We, we don't really talk too much about that, but it's a possibility. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what would you do? You'd have to grow alternative crops, um, but it's important to prepare for all these um, types of scenarios. So that's another example. And there's another one in, um, and thanks Rebecca for these questions. Um, so there was a question around scenarios on air quality, particularly pollution from mobile sources. Mobile sources. Um, interesting. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the, the person means in that context, and I'm not myself an expert, um, but definitely air pollution. When you have a wildfire, that obviously contributes to air, air pollution. So we actually did have um, scientists who propose kind of projects for that scenario that had to do with, with the air pollution from a wildfire. Um, so the crises we look at at the ISR are, are pressing crises um, that are that are increasing. That certainly is one, um, but but less sort of the continuous crisis um, that's slowly progressing and more the, the fast paced ones um, that are um, as for a certain time frame, um, like a hurricane. Yeah. But, so yeah. I hope that answers your question. So the mobile sources are um, cars, trucks. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, I was like, yeah. So and yeah. there's probably pollution that's caused from like creating mobile devices, but yes, cars yes, and trucks. I, yeah, I was thinking so that as well. Yeah. If I, if I could, so what you're saying is that these are, right now, these scenarios are really focused on the sort of, you know, this kind of like this disaster is coming or it's, you know, like a wildfire or a hurricane. I would say that cars and trucks and the pollution, Rebecca, would be sort of this current disaster, but that has been ongoing and a constant, right? Yeah. Yes. And also we're looking at things that um, impact several countries at once. Now, I mean, the pollution from cars certainly do, um, but but um, yeah, it's just a um, slightly different take. Um, so this brings up another question I have before. And, you know, of course, I could, you know, keep asking you questions, <laughs> but we'll probably have to wrap up soon. But... In terms of the scenarios, um, is this? Do you envision a community kind of coming up with them, or is this still something that sort of ISR and your community manager decides? Like, how how do you make that decision about what the scenario is? That's a great question, and it's kind of a little bit of both. Um, so they have been expert driven um, by the ISR's partners. Um, so that when I mentioned on food crops, we have a partner that works specifically wow. on that. They're really experts. Um, but we we are thinking about asking for the community to contribute their ideas and then bringing in experts that they might be directly from the community or others to kind of um, talk these through um, and and come up with really good scenarios. So we're yeah. doing a bit of that. Awesome. So Rebecca, I invite you to, you know, um, come on in and, and collaborate. And I think there'll be some uh, wonderful opportunities there um, for you to suggest some. Um, I do think, you know, different levels. And, you know, I do know it, with, with air pollution, what's interesting is when you have those extreme events, like, you know, Beijing will have sort of an extreme event. Obviously, we you mentioned the wildfires. I'm a New York City native you're living in New York City. So um, certainly the wild, the Canadian wildfires last year, um, I mean, the air quality in New York was the worst ever recorded um, globally, right? Yeah. In one yeah. single day. So um, I think those ongoing um, challenges really do burst into kind of a crisis or an immediate crisis. Yeah. Um, 
All right. So um, I don't think we have any more questions. Oh, wait, let me just check. Oh, yeah. Um, and just again, a reminder to everyone that um, this wonderful conversation has been recorded. We will be sharing it out. Our wonderful team um, here will be um, summarizing it into a nice blog post, so please share those. Um, and also, please look out for um, details for upcoming webinars, because again, we just have the most awesome um, guests really doing um, critical work in our community and using um, technology to connect to each other um, and to use that sort of harness that collective mind, which is extremely powerful um, when you get people collaborating, especially across cultures like this. It's just incredible. Um, so I wanted to um, wrap up and just, I don't know, um, uh, Liz or Christine over at our team, if we were going to have a little poll um, just as we kind of close out. Um, if you have time for folks that are um, on the call, if there's you know, one word you'd use to describe today's conversation, we also use that as feedback for our next and future ones. So um, thanks for joining that. Should we give people a minute to answer. And Ben, in the, in the remaining minute, I just do wanna uh, thank you again for joining us and, and it's really um, a privilege to partner with you. So I really appreciate Same here. it. Thanks for having me. And us. I do, and by the way, can you also tell me what is in your, your background? I love it. Yes, that's just, it's a painting. <laughs> it's it's actually one of my dad's paintings, so yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, all right, so thanks again for everyone providing feedback and we will see you next month and please look out for details of that and look out for the recording of this great conversation and please do check out um, the ISR's website at the New York Academy of Sciences. Thanks so much, Julie. Yeah, thanks. Thanks everyone.